an unexpected slowdown in hiring heading right into the holiday season. According to the November jobs report out just this morning, U.S. employers added just 210,000 jobs last month, and that's well below a, the half a million jobs that were predicted. So joining us now to further discuss the state of the job market is Jordan Shapiro. He's a senior managing director for the Backrack Group, a recruiting and consulting firm that connects employers with job seekers. Jordan, good to see you. Thank you for having me this morning. So when you look at the numbers, right, what's the initial takeaway that you have from this new job jobs report? It may not look promising to so many. Well, certainly the top line numbers are slightly disappointing based on the expectation of a half a million jobs added versus the actual of 200,000. But let's also keep in mind that over the last 12 months, the U.S. economy has added over half a million jobs per month. So labor rates, they ebb, they flow, and overall the employment picture in the United States is strong, despite what we're seeing in the November report. Mm -hmm. uh, what was a little surprising is the lack of job creation in the retail sector. In the months of November and December, we typically see a fairly significant uptick in retail hiring due to the holiday season, and the retail sector actually shed about 20,000 jobs this past month. So that's something that uh, deserves a little more exploration and does raise some larger questions yeah. about where we are in the economic cycle. What about the other industries I mean, besides retail? Can you talk about the supply and demand that we're seeing in the labor force right now? Well, professional services added almost half the new jobs in November. Professional services are accounting, consulting, mm -hmm. and other business services firms. And those are highly skilled jobs, uh, not hourly wages, salaried, skilled employees. So seeing the job growth there, especially as we accelerate towards the end of the year, it's a very encouraging sign because it means that firms uh, that shed high paying jobs over the course of the last two years and during the pandemic are now starting to bring even more of those workers yeah. back. But and that's leading to a lot of the demand we see in the skilled labor force. Yeah, but we also hear that there's a lot of help wanted signs are and that some places just cannot fill those jobs yeah. right that they're that they're help wanted and they're facing a labor shortage so what would you say to some of the, are some of the biggest factors impacting what they say is a labor shortage is it a quality of jobs issue well, the labor participation rate has been stubbornly low over the last 12 months. It's about 2% lower than it had been pre-pandemic levels. And I believe that represents a lot of the difficulties that you're discussing. It's this search for hourly workers, more of the unskilled positions in retail and in food service. And that really seems to be where uh, most employers are having a difficult time mm. adding staff. Uh, what I believe is that the pandemic caused a number of individuals to reconsider their personal employment situation, mm -hmm. when so many went unemployed for a duration of the pandemic, they're realizing that the opportunity cost of working in some of those lower paying jobs uh, simply doesn't outweigh uh, their ability to get up and go work in those jobs. Are you, so are you, that puts... Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so that puts the burden on employers to find new ways mm -hmm. to attract employees. And we saw 5% wage growth year over year this month, or just around 5%. It was a tenth of a percent lower than what had been estimated. And historically, that's a pretty significant jump, 5% increase in wages year over year. It's slightly below the level of consumer price inflation that we're seeing, uh, but that's one of the ways in which employers really have to seriously consider uh, their levels of compensation uh, and use that to attract right. employees into these positions that they're having a difficult time filling. Yeah, you, you actually answered the question, <laughs> question I was going to ask you, but besides increasing wages, what else are employers doing to attract job seekers? Mm -hmm. They have to show flexibility. We've spent almost two years in a primarily work from home environment, though the number of employees returning to full time in office work has steadily increased over the last 12 months. Uh, but employers need to show flexibility. Uh, they need to provide ancillary benefits to their employees and their potential employees. And they really need to demonstrate that they can offer strong opportunity for the individuals that they're trying to attract, whether that's opportunity for promotion or advancement, mm -hmm. simple wage increases, to tuition reimbursement, child care, flexibility in hours and right. working environment. You know, we have to keep the employee first in an environment where talent is difficult to secure. Uh, all right, Jordan Shapiro, appreciate you being here this morning to talk about the labor market. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. All right.